YouTube. Today, we're trying out a brand new team and we're going to see if Frost Breath Anger Point strats are viable. Yep, we're using Tauros with some very fun Pokemon. If you do enjoy the videos, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a comment down below. It really does help me out. And if you want to check out the details of the team, there's a pastebin available in the description down below. But otherwise, let's get started and play some games. All right, looks like we got a variant of Sage and Parks. 2014 at Worlds team with some interesting additions. We have the Gyarados, the Pachirisu, the Guard War, Tyranitar, Garchomp, and Zapdos. So if I remember correctly, only Zapdos and Tyranitar weren't on the original team. Garchomp, Guard War, plus Gyarados and Pachirisu definitely were. So follow me. One of the worst matchups for this team, actually. <laughs> because that means I can't like get the Frost Breath off immediately. However, I do have like a decent options, I guess. I have Crobat for the Tailwind, which seems pretty good here. Smeargle's pretty solid. I think the Tauros is really good here. And I guess the Frostlass. Icy Wind's actually really good against their team. Speed control wise. This can be scary though. I It's just a follow me threat. At least there is no goggles in this format. I mean the original team was Citrus Bear. So I didn't match it. Citrus Bear on the Pachirisu too. So let's see. The annoying part is they have Tyranitar with the Sandstream. Which is going to activate the Sandstorm. Which is going to break a Sash on Smeargle. As well as potential... Uh, Sandvale on the Garchomp depending on if it's actually going to be Sandvale Garchomp here that can be kind of annoying well we'll just see how it goes I suppose it's going to be the lead of Pachirisu and Gyarados okay not too bad not too bad as I do lead my Smeargle and my Crobat and this is pretty good I'd say I can go for a Spore into the Pachirisu very safely I can get a Tailwind up I guess the question is what item are you on the Gyarados because that's going to be pretty important so we are going to go for the Tailwind right here and we are going to go for the Spore into the Pachirisu, I think. I don't think this is that bad of a play. Even if they go Tyranitar, I think it's still manageable. Especially if I get a Spore off into that Tyranitar slot. I don't want Protect from Gyarados and Nuzzle from the Pachirisu. I think that's like worst case scenario. So I think I'd rather just go for the Spore in the Pachirisu. Even if the Pachirisu has a chance to Protect here. I feel like it's more likely that they are... I don't know if they're Lumberry on the Gyarados. That's a big question. Because if it's Lumberry Gyarados, it's going to play differently. But we are going to see the swap from Gyarados perfect into the Zapdos. Oh, that's amazing for me. That's absolutely amazing for me. So I can get a Tailwind off, which is really good here. And a Spore in a Pachirisu. Yeah, really good. Okay, that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. I get a Spore off into the Pachirisu slot. And we have a very, very solid turn right here. Pachirisu, if it takes two turns of sleep, this game might be a wrap. This game might be a wrap if that's going to be the case. I'm going to go hard into Tauros here. And I'm going to go for the Spore into the Zapdos. Now, worst case is if Patrice does wake up here. If it does, that's annoying. But still probably manageable. I'm going to try to greed this for the, the Tauros setup right here. Spore into the Zapdos. I don't think you're going to be Lumberry Zapdos. If you are, that's a little bit awkward, but okay. That does the sleep for the first turn. Pachirisu. Fast asleep. Excellent. 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 I can go for a big strength into Pachirisu. And I'm actually going to go for the storm throw here into my Tauros. Now, the reason I am going for the strength here is because I don't want... I don't think Rock Slide can KO the Pachirisu at plus six. Because I'm not like Life Orb or anything. Like, even though it's plus six, Pachirisu can have like pretty impressive bulk. So, I'll go for the storm throw. Always get the critical hit. We get the anger point with Tauros, and we get a strength off into the Pachirisu, which should always pick up a knockout here, which is excellent. So, goodbye Pachirisu. Awesome. That's a huge knockout, and let's see what the Zapdos... It, does he, do you wake up? Nope. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is pretty fun. This is a pretty fun time. I'll say that much. Uh, what's going to come out here? Garchomp, Tyranitar, the uh, Gyarados once again. Uh, do I still turn this Tailwind? <laughs> Wait, that's my side, isn't it? Wait, did, my, did I DC? Are you kidding me? Oh, I had it set up. I'm pretty sure I had the game sealed at that point. I mean, I probably could have missed some attacks, but it looks really bad for them. I don't know how they come back in that spot. Like, I have a plus six Toro, so they can't even Oko it. I have Transform. I was going to Transform, potentially. I could have went hard into Crobat as well. I had so many potential options. Are you kidding me, game? Okay, another Pachirisu, really, with Zapdos, Gardevoir, the Hariyama, Gengar with 
right here so this is a trick room gardevoir uh, if it is that's actually really annoying because i don't have a really good way to stop trick room like my best way to stop trick room ironically is like ludi cole's smirgle lead which isn't that bad i like having a mon that actually hits the right period because with solid rock it might live a plus six torkoal attack here i can also go typhlosion typhlosion eruption probably does some pretty solid damage the gengar is like really concerning though i am very concerned about the gengar i think i'm gonna go with like smirgle ludi cole with typhlosion and tauros I think that's the way. I think I could sweep this trainer with Eruption. So I think I'm going to try that. Uh, just the Gengar is concerning because if the Gengar has Taunt, this makes it really difficult to set up. Gengar Pachirisu, not exactly what we like to see here. Okay. But I can fake out the Pachirisu and I can Spore the Gengar. If the Gengar's slower, I can get a Spore off. Or if it's attempting to Trick Room, that's okay. If they have Protect on both, that's awkward, but... Not much I can really do here. So we're going to spore the Gengar and we're going to fake out the Pachirisu. Really comes down to also like if I get Sludge Bomb Poison with Smeargle, we might just lose right off the bat. I mean, maybe not a loss, but it'd be pretty bad. It'd be extremely bad if we lost Smeargle here immediately. So, okay. Fake out into Pachirisu's big here. Try to follow me. Nice. Okay, cool. Okay, I got a spore off into the Gengar slot. Huge. So... Takes a turn to sleep. I can bring out a threat here. I'm going to bring out Typhlosion. And I'm going to start going for Eruption, I think. Or I could Scald immediately. But I like the Typhlosion Eruption. Because I have to bank on multiple turns on Pachirisu, most likely. So I think it's always just sport a Pachirisu and go hard into my Typhlosion. Because I'll have Eruption Pressure afterward. I don't know what the Gengar item is. I might need a 3 turn sleep on Gengar if it's Focus Ash. If it's not Focus Ash, if Eruption just KOs, that'd be the best case scenario. But I should be able to get a Spore off into Pachirisu. Unless for some reason it's like a very fast Pachirisu, which I really doubt here. And Typhlosion needs to get some eruptions off. But I need a Gengar to stay asleep this turn or I'm in a lot of trouble. So Spore coming out into you. Okay. Good on my opponent not to click follow me there because uh, that would have burnt. That would have wasted basically a Pachirisu turn that they could use for sleep. And nice, Gengar is still asleep. Okay, excellent. I don't know what I'm doing here. I could transform into my Typhlosion for extra power, but I mean, I won't have a spec, so I don't know if that's really worth it. I could Spore here. I could also go Ludicolo for Fake Out. I have quite a few options. I could transform into Gengar potentially. What that allows me to do if I transform into Gengar is I am able to maybe reverse a Trick Room. Actually, yeah, I like that. I do like that. I'm going to transform into Gengar and Eruption. Gengar wakes up. Okay. Sludge bombs the Typhlosion. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> uh, it was fast too. Okay. So I get to transform off into the Gengar. Oh, this is so awkward now of a position. Okay. Patrice is still asleep. That's at least good for me. Okay. We both have a Sash Gengar, but the Gengar is probably its Sash is broken, which gives me some hope. Oh, jeez, I need Patrice not to wake up here. If it wakes up here, that's really awkward. I'm going to go hard on a Ludicolo, and I'm going to throw off a Shadow Ball. Okay, we know that the Gengar is three attacks. Okay, win a speed tie here as uh, Smeagol. That'd be really helpful. That'd be really helpful. Gotta retreat the... Maybe I shouldn't have gone greedy, but I thought the Gengar might have been like a slow variant potentially on this team. Just because of the fact that my opponent looked pretty Trick Room heavy, but... Yeah, this is not going to be the case. So we are actually in a very, very scary situation here. With the Gengar threatening a Focus Sash KO onto my... Or breaks the Focus Sash on my Smeargle. The Pachirisu can wake up, go for Follow Me. It's just a pretty rough mess right here. So <laughs> I do have to retreat to Typhlosion. Maybe I should have just went for Heat Wave. But I wasn't sure. We're going to see Gengar retreat, actually. Okay. Into the Hariyama. So Hariyama's taking a Shadow Ball. I don't think I mind this too much. Yeah, I wouldn't mind this too much. Okay. Ludicolo comes in. Please stay asleep, Patchy. If you stay asleep this turn, it's fantastic for me. Oh, no. Yeah, that was the uh, one thing that could have gone wrong there. A Nuzzle. I curse body it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, I could fake out to stall out a turn from the Hariyama. I think I go back in the Typhlosion, I guess. I mean, maybe it's not too bad. I still have Eruption Heat Wave, and usually, like, the best moves that Petra... Petra usually runs Follow Me, Super Fang, and Nuzzle. It could run Helping Hand. I'm pretty sure it gets Helping Hand, but at this case, I think it's 
I think it's okay to just start going for heat waves. Should be all right here. And also the fact that the Gengar on their side has, again, a broken focus sash. So I'd really love to have some pressure onto that Gengar because Gengar is a threat. We go Typhlosion here. As Typhlosion shouldn't be threatened by knockout. All right, I'm going to detect is okay here. I'm assuming this is like Super Fang in the Ludicolo slot, which is okay by me. Oh, the, wait, no, Heart Alma shouldn't have priority then. Okay. So Super Fang going to come out into Ludicolo. Okay. And Heatwave should pick up a knockout into the Hariyama slot. I don't think it has fame. Probably close combat knockoff. Fake out detect, I imagine. So I'm going to go hard in a Smeargle here. And I'm going to go for... Oh, I don't have Heatwave. I only have Flamethrower. Oh, it's because Typhlosion doesn't get Heatwave this jet. Oh, what a... Yeah. Oh, well. We'll Flamethrower to Hariyama anyway. That's really rough, actually. That's really rough. We'll bring out the Smeargle. Follow me. Gonna come out. Yeah, because my only spread move. Oh, yeah. I didn't have Heat Wave. Oh, that's really bad. Flamethrower gonna come out. This is Blaze Spec, so maybe it picks up the Knockout. It does. I'm not sure if that's even good for me. Because that means Gengar comes in for free. Knockoff gonna come out. They target the Ludicolo Sl Oh, no. My Tauros is useless. My Tauros is useless now. That's so sad. Yeah. Gengar Focus Sash is really tough for this team when it when it's a Trick Room Gengar specifically. If it was like any other Gengar set, I'd be okay. Uh, what can I do here? Probably Tor Harden the Tauros here. Maybe Tauros can knock out the Hariyama? I think that's a play. <laughs> Because I don't see how else I'm getting through this trainer. So I'm going to strength the Hariyama. Hope it picks up the knockout with max attack strength. And then flinter the Gengar. Hariyama doesn't have the best physical defense in the world. So maybe there's a shot. Maybe they throw and go for chicken for some reason. When they should just take the KO on Typhlosion always. Are they scared of the Tauros? I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it. I think you always just try to take the knockout here into the Typhlosion slot. Which is okay. Maybe there's a shot. If Tauros can come out of this game a winner. If it can ignore. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Gengar retreats into what? Wait. This is doable. Okay, that's a really strange detect play. Because this is Blaze Flamethrower. This is going to do a lot. Yeah, yeah, he said it a lot today. <laughs> And they take burn damage. I'm not sure about that. They had a free KO, but maybe they just didn't know my Tauros item. Okay, how would they maneuver this? I have Strength here and Flamethrower here, I'm pretty sure, in a Rhyperior. The only play that I see that gets them out of this is Hariyama switching out into this, the Gengar slot. Which I think is okay, because I could spam Earthquake at that point, right? So, I don't think that would be too bad, actually. Yeah, I'm just going to Flamethrower and I'm going to Strength here. Should be okay, I want to say. It's not the most ideal situation, but definitely, maybe we could win this, actually. Okay, they they do switch out. Yeah, that's the correct play into Gengar. Yep. So, right here, it does protect. Okay, they did play this end game very solidly here. I could have read that. I don't think it was necessary to, though. And this upcoming turn... I go for Earthquake Flamethrower, I'm pretty sure. The Gengar doesn't have Protect here. Uh, who do I Flamethrower is the question. I guess it'd be the Gengar slot. Yeah, it's the Gengar slot. They're going to take the Knockout finally in the Typhlosion, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. I need Tauros to come in clutch for the end game. I think Tauros can win this end game. It just depends. It needs to live a move from Rhyperior here because I think Rhyperior survives with Solid Rock. The Gengar goes down, actually. I fought it. Okay, Earthquake disabled. That's not too bad, though. That's not too, that's not too bad. Brick break. We should live. Yes. Bulky Tauros. And it's life for Rhyperior. Oh, wait. That's a win. How did I win this? <laughs> How did I win this? This looks so bad. <laughs> oh, man. Tauros didn't even need the anger point. It just won straight out. Holy cow. I did not expect that one. Okay. Didn't even need the anger point. Nice. Hariyama gonna come out. We click fake out. We click strength. If they detect, they stall out a burn. And yeah, it still looks really bad for them regardless. So we're gonna go for the strength here. And we're gonna go for a fake out. 
no way Hariyama has the faster fake out and shouldn't matter unless they crit fake out the battle's gonna be forfeit because they do realize I can't believe that Taurus won that I cannot believe that Taurus won that <laughs> okay this next game will be tough though for sure so this is still a very very scary matchup for sure hmm how do I want to approach it this time because last time wasn't exactly the greatest plan in the world I will acknowledge it wasn't the greatest plan in the world. If we can deny Trick Room somehow, that'd be nice. Maybe like Crobat lead. If I want to stop Trick Room, my only option is I need to lead Ludicolo. I do need to lead Ludicolo in order to stop it. If I had like... Yeah, I have to lead Ludicolo in order to stop it. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part. I guess it's manageable though. I'm going to try out Crobat plus the Ludicolo here. And then Smeargle, I think. I think Smeargle and Typhlosion in the back. I'm fine with sacking Pokemon in order to get this strategy off. So what I'm going to do is like taunt immediately, which I think is the key part. Ariyama Gengar. That's amazing for me, actually. That's amazing for me. Okay. That's really good because I can taunt the Gengar and I can go for a fake out into the Ludi. Into actually, do you even have to fake out Hariyama? I don't have to, right? It's like, what's Hariyama going to do? Are they going to double up the Crobat? I think that's okay. And they might even swap out the Hariyama here. I'm just going to... You know what? I'm going to taunt and scald. I feel like breaking the Sash is more important. I guess they get the Fake Out Chip in the Ludi. Oh, that puts me in Sludge Bomb range. But that's okay, right? I'm pretty sure that is. Taunt into Gengar. As... Yeah, they can't Trick Room here. The Flame Orb. That's okay. We can go for Brave Bird. I think in the Hariyama, we do pick up a knockout here. We're going to sack our Ludicolo here for a Scald, I think. Are they going to swap out the Hariyama? Because it goes down to Life of Brave Bird. This is Life of Brave Bird that I do have. So into the Hariyama, picks up a knockout. Easy. Okay. That's a really nice crit. I don't think mattered. That's Life Orb, Max Attack, Brave Bird. And what's the Gengar doing is the question. Shadow Ball will KO my Crobat. They could Sludge Ball my Ludicolo, which I'm kind of hoping for here. Nice, okay. Cool. That's completely okay with me. Alright. So the setup is pretty much met here. We go into Smeargle. And we start setting up for our Tauros endgame. The only problem is we haven't broken the Sash on Gengar. Which is a little bit unfortunate. But overall. They have one more turn of Taunts. I can sport a Gengar this upcoming turn. Or I can sport a Pachirisu. Both kind of work. This is looking a lot better in this game too. I think... I'm pretty sure it looks way better than it did game one somehow. I'll definitely tell you that. Smeargo coming in. Hatcherisu is coming in. No surprise. Okay. So I'm going to go for Tailwind and... Yeah, I Tailwind here for sure. With the Crobat. And I think I Spore here. Now the question is who do I Spore? Because I could Spore the Pachirisu, But what if they read that and just protect here? Then it would be kind of awkward. But you know what? I think I will go for the Spore attempt into the Pachirisu. I mean, the Gengar can't protect at all, but okay, they do attack here. Excellent. Excellent. I guess Spore off in Apache. Good. Okay. And the Gengar going to go for Sludge Bomb. Okay, just don't poison. Because that's what I'm risking. They get a crit. Okay. Nice. Okay. That's really good. Gengar shakes off the taunt. That's okay. I could taunt the Gengar if I want to. I just don't see a reason why I would do that. I think I take the knockout if I can. I'm going to Brave Bird the Gengar slot. I'm going to Spore here. I guess they could also bank on the first turn Wake. They might be trying to do that with Patchy. Oh, this could be bad if Patchy gets the first turn Wake here. Patchy gets the first turn Wake. Gengar gets Trick him up and I can't stall that out. I'm pretty sure. I guess I could get multiple Protects. With my Smeargle. That could be a thing, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, dang it. They did wake up. Unlucky. So they get a follow me off. They And we Brave Bird and Spore. Okay. Okay, now I... Well, Crobat's not going to go down to this. Okay. So what's Gengar going for here? Okay, this is pretty bad now. Oh, they went for Sludge Bomb. Okay, wait, hold on. This is still a doable game then. This is shockingly a doable game. Unfortunately, I do think I lose to Rhyperior in the end game. 
but hey it's definitely manageable okay so we go tauros here we're gonna click earthquake and we're gonna click i think i can't afford okay i have to cross poison i'm pretty sure and I gotta hope that Earthquake just naturally KOs the Gengar, I'm pretty sure. Because if I go for Brave Bird, I go down to Recoil. And I do think I need Crobat to get one hit off into whatever's in the back. So, <laughs> let's see if this is gonna work. Because I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't even think I knock out the Patchy. I'm not even sure if I two-shot the Patchy at this range. All I know is Patchy can't wake up this turn guaranteed. You see the swap, okay. Wait, it's Gardevoir back? Oh, oh, I don't think they expected the cross poison here. <laughs> I didn't even need anger point in this game. <laughs> um, uh, I, 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 I can't even explain what's going on. Earthquake going to come out in Apache. Decent damage. Can't wake up here, though. That's the important part. Okay. And then I double up the Gengar this upcoming turn. I cross poison plus earthquake. I mean, I might as well just see if it KOs, right? I'm pretty sure it does. Gengar can't protect either. I, no, I could actually... No, I can Brave Bird Earthquake here. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I can't Brave Bird Earthquake here. The reason I can't Brave Bird Earthquake here is because if the Apache does wake up and follows me, I'm in a bad spot. Yeah, yeah. So I have to go for the earthquake here and the cross poison. Because their only shot of winning, I think, is to follow me and save the Gengar, a Focus Ash, right? And hope Crobat goes down to Recoil so they get two hits off in the Tauros. Although I do have Citrus Berry, so I might just survive a hit. Okay, no Protects. Here comes a Cross Poison. It is Quad Resisted, so it doesn't do that much. First Body, that's okay. Oh, wait, I went down to Recoil anyway? I didn't count Recoil. Oh, I was 16, 14, okay. Wait, if I don't KO the Gengar, this is really bad. Okay, no, I do. Tauros the GOAT. <laughs> oh, we crit the Gengar. I don't know if that mattered. It's max attack, Adam, and Tauros, but... And Gengar is pretty frail, but... Who knows? Okay, game's technically not over yet. They can move a bunch of nuzzles. They have to make sure I can't hit a single move. And I have a Citrus Berry, so I'm stalling out with Super Fangs. So... <laughs> Uh, let's go for the big strength. Toro, show them your strength, because that's what you did to them. You didn't even need the anger point. I just went with a Tauros. <laughs> I still can't believe This game was so... <laughs> uh, okay, there's one para. There's one para. I think they need, like, four or something. I think they need, like, four more. Super Fang? Because they need to put me in nuzzle range, because that's the only way they can KO me. Okay, nope. Never lucky. Strength gonna come out into Pachirisu. And pick up the Naga. I can't I can't believe that. I actually can't believe that. <laughs> oh Tauros. Actually crazy. Who needs anger point? Who who needs the ability? Tauros, the king of gen one, just ended up pulling out a major victory right there. That's insane. I still can't get over that. Game one. I figured out like how to get positions, I guess, for like, how do I win that end game? And it looks like it somehow worked out because I was able to like put, position myself for like the right plays, I suppose, denying the trick room still. And then game two, I still can't believe that happened, but <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say. If you currently enjoy the content you're watching and want to see more of it, make sure you check out my other YouTube channels, my second YouTube channel, my Eclipse channel, and of course, make sure you follow the action live on my Twitch channel. All links available in the description down below. Okay, Rotom Wash, the Electivire, Gardevoir, Infernape, Latios, and Steelix. So Electivire is pretty strong, but actually I am kind of worried about Electivire this time. I don't exactly have the best answers to it, but I do have Crobat and Smeargle as a lead here, which seems pretty good. Oh, if it's a Scarf Rotom Wash, I can't lead that, huh? Because if I lead that, that's pretty bad. Okay, so I'm going to go with like, I guess, Ludicolo lead then with Smeargle Tauros in the back. This is kind of weird because I want Eruption, but I'm not sure. If they have Trick Room, it's really weird. Uh, the Latios can't carry Tailwind on this team. It's just a... I just got to figure out sets because I don't know what this team is really carrying other than maybe like Scarf Roto. So we're going to see Infernape lead here. Okay, really good lead on air part. Can I play around this? I don't think I can. Okay, let's go for the Tailwind and let's go for a Fake Out, I suppose, into the Rotom. I don't really have much of a play. Good lead on their part. I didn't really have the best answers for this one. Fake out in the Ludicolo. And 
Yeah, it is Scarf, but they both switched into Ludi. I don't know about that one. Okay. So I got like a really big bailout right there that they didn't target Crobat. Maybe they didn't think they could KO. I guess maybe their Volt Switch is Discharge and not T-Bolt. So that could be really good for me. Okay. Here comes a Tailwind. I guess I'm just going to taunt the Latias then. Because I don't want them getting up a Tailwind. And I guess I'll just Scald here the Infernape. They switch out the Rotom. That's okay. I don't mind that. A taunt in the Lottie seems really good here. And then try to get the Smeargle in for setup seems really solid. So yeah, I'll go for Scald here. I'll go for Fang. They do switch out the Infernape. So this is Rotom. We did confirm it was Scarf Rotom earlier. Yep. Okay. And here comes a taunt into the Lottie House. So no Tailwind for you. I need to get rid of their fast threats though. They have a lot of fast threats. Scald into the Rotom. Yeah, Skull did a good amount. Giga Drain looks like it might miss a knockout. They do Tailwind Attempt. Okay. We want our Crobat to go down here, potentially. So we want to Brave Bird the Latias, and we want to Giga Drain here the Rotom slot. Uh, they could make an Inferno play, but they're actually going to switch out the Lotti. Okay. Into Electivire. Oh, is this Discharge? You have to lift the Giga Drain first. Here comes a Brave Bird into the Electivire. Okay. This actually might be really good if, if potentially. Let's see. Giga Drain into you. It actually picks up the knockout. That's actually phenomenal. Yeah, I am able to pick up a knockout right there. Okay. Still a tough game, but still very manageable. All right. Really nice to see there. The Electivire super weakened. They didn't get discharge off. Yeah, so Scald into Giga Drain will always KO. That's really good to know. Inferno comes out. I have cross poison. I have life from cross poison. So that's what we're going to go for. And I guess we're just going to scald here, the Infernape. I don't see a reason why we wouldn't. If they protect Electivire attack with Infernape, it's cool, I think. Let's see. They fake out the Crobat. They forgot about Inner Focus. Here comes the cross poison. Life Orb. Chaos. Okay, this game should be over at this point. I don't see how they're coming back. Because I guess Scald off into the Infernape should put into Focus Ash range. And then it's Latias versus the world. And I don't think Latias has enough hits. Yeah, especially with Focus Ash and with Smeargle intact. So yeah, that's a pretty big wrap here. Latias going to come in. That's cool. We're going to go for a Tailwind Peter out, right? I guess we just... Uh, we... We Tailwind ourselves. Yeah, we always Tailwind in Giga Drain. Unless the Infernape has Protects, I guess. But yeah, our Tailwind expired. We get the Tailwind back up. We get the KO on Infernape. And this should be a wrap here. So, because yeah, Infernape either had to take the KO on Ludicolo or the Crobat. If they took the KO on Crobat, that's okay there. Yeah, I mean, they just didn't have an out at this point. Psychic going to come out into the Crobat. Okay, so I can get the Anger Point off for the late game. That's actually pretty good. So, what I do here, Smeargle in... Tauros in for the Ludi slot, Spore the Latias slot, and then afterward I go for the Storm Drain. Or it's not Storm Drain, the Storm Throw, and then I should win the game. I guess... No, I don't think... Can Latias win? It needs a Lumberry right now. And it has a Draco crit, I think, my Tauros. Because the regular Draco Meteor shouldn't KO. Or maybe it does. Because I'm only, like, HP invested. I do get the Spore off, cool. And then this should be a win. Because I go for a Storm Drain. Or <laughs> I keep calling it Storm Drain. Storm Throw into the Tauros. And I Strength into the Ladia slot. And I have Transform if they try to protect Stall for some reason. So Storm Throw into Tauros. Always guaranteed the critical hit. Which means activates the Anger Point. Goodbye, Ladias. Here is a Strength with the Tauros. Picks up the Knockout. Easy. Okay. Nice. A good game. So we figured they had. I got so bailed out though. I absolutely got bailed out. I got to figure out a better plan for the lead, as that was not a pretty lead at all for me. If they did something different. All right, this is game two. We're gonna go with Crobat and Frostlast lead this time because we have icy wind on our Frostlast. That should help us significantly here. With Smeargle in the back and Tauros once again. I want to say. I know Ludicolo this time. We're bringing the Frost Ass because we need speed control somehow. And we need to either get Tailwind up or we need Icy Winds. And both are pretty good here. So I, I'll definitely take it right here with this. So I think they realize 
that the Chromat does have inner focus this time to not make the same fake out mistake. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised that they faked out the Ludicolo then. <laughs> or maybe they were expecting a double up knockout the Infernape there and just wanted to get some chip. But they could have saved the Infernape because they could have just faked out the Ludicolo. So I'm not even sure at that point. We're going to see Steelix Gardevoir lead. Oh, Trick Room? That's cool with me. I have a... Yeah, this is cool for me. I have a Cross Poison Life Orb boosted and I have Will-O-Wisp. I'm going to Willow the Steelix and just going to Cross Poison the uh, the Gardevoir. Oh wait, Gardevoir gets ally switch in this game. Oh, don't be ally switch, please. Don't ally switch turn one. Don't ally switch turn one. Wait, you saw I had Cross Poison. Why would you ever lead Gardevoir into this? Is this like supposed to be like beat the Cross Poison? No, they just protect. That's cool. So here comes a cross poison into you. A willow, which means I can't sleep the Steelix, but I mean the Steelix is not doing any damage to me afterward. Maybe in the Frost Last, but that's okay, I think. Get a heavy slam. I'm assuming my Frost Last here. Yeah, I do live because of the Willow. And I curse body them, which is actually really nice here. Okay. So it's not I don't think it's it's not life of sheer force. I guess I just cross poison the guard war slot and I just icy wind spam. Because like whatever's coming in is taking an icy wind, which means their speed is going to get reduced regardless. So this includes Rotom, this includes everything. That means I still have the speed advantage at the end of the day. And Crobat still being around is really solid. Yeah, they're going to switch out. I'm assuming this is Rotom. Yep, perfect. That's really good for me. Cool. I am able to get cross poison off, which is huge damage into the Rotom. Yeah, that's some pretty solid damage and an icy wind off. And let's get some speed advantage up here. So now I have the option. Oh, this is really good. Especially if I can get the Rotom asleep. That'd be amazing. If I can get the Rotom asleep, it looks really good for this end game. Curse. Okay, I don't really care about that. Is this the rest curse set, actually? If it's the rest curse set, that's actually kind of annoying. But okay. I'm going to go for a... Leftovers, I guess it's Rest Curse. I didn't even know it had Leftovers. Did we see a proc? No, it just took the burn damage last time. Okay. I'm going to go for a Taunt right here into the Steelix. And I'm just going to Icy Wind. Did I Frost Breath here? I, I think Rotom should always swap here. I don't think it ever should stay in because it goes down to Cross Poison. So I'm just going to Frost Breath Taunt. Because the damage in the Rotom... Oh, they would have gave me the Rotom? I did not expect that one. All right. So I get a Taunt off in the Steelix. Frost Breath connects, which is nice. Free chip. Oh, wait. Are you discharging here, I guess? This charge is actually a little bit awkward. Oh, they Volt Switch. No, cool. Frostbreath goes down. That's completely okay. And what do you bring out? Let's see. I had to dodge Discharge Paris, which is the only awkward part about this game. Uh, let's see, because if it's Gardevoir, that's actually ideal. Yeah, Gardevoir is actually ideal here. A hey, Earthquake. Oh, Telepathy. Okay, cool. Do I always keep Steelix alive? Because it's burned. It's plus one, but it doesn't accomplish anything, I'm pretty sure. I think I storm throw for sure into my Toro slot and strength here. I'm pretty sure. So I bring out the Toros. So I bring out the Smeargle. I mean, I could have lost this. I'm not too sure. I really didn't expect the Rotom to attack there. I thought they would always like try to sack Guard War because Rotom like fast is actually really solid here. But maybe they thought I would try to get a Tailwind up or something. And uh, then the Rotom wouldn't have that speed advantage. So we Strength here and Storm Throw. If this Guard Wars faster than me, we get to find out. And that's pretty bad if it is. But we'll find out, I suppose. Okay, cool. It shouldn't be faster than Tauros. Okay. I could have Earthquaked here myself. But I think having the HP is more important. Especially since Steelix can't accomplish much here. We get a Strength off into you. Picks up the Knockout. Okay. I'm just worried because this end game looks really terrifying. Earthquake breaks a sash on the Smeargle. They crit my Smeargle, unfortunate. Yeah. Because that's actually like really bad for Transform potentially. Because maybe Transformed Smeargle could have lived a hit. Okay. I gotta dodge some stuff. 
Moves no longer disabled. Wait. Oh yeah, I hit to say I curse body their finger. Infernape. Oh no. Oh no. It had to be Infernape in the back. I thought that they were setting up for Electra. That's why they didn't want to roll them. I had to commit a read. I have to commit which slot the Infernape starting because if I if I get the read right, I win here, I think. So it's either they go for the Tauros KO or they're gonna target the Smeargle. Okay, you know what? Spiky Shield Earthquake. Please target the Smeargle because the Infernape has Sash so it can live a hit. And then Earthquake Chaos. Ah! <laughs> okay. I mean, I could still win this, but it's really unlikely here, I think. <laughs> they have a slam and a Smeargle. That's extra chip. Wait, are you going to go down? Okay, no. You, st you still have plenty of HP. Okay, cool. Dang, I could have went for the Spores. For I guess I didn't have to protect there. I mean, I thought they were just going to close combat if that's the case. I'm gonna go, I mean, Steelix shakes off the taunt. Gotta make a last ditch play. Sporty Infernape. I gotta hope that Taurus lives one from the Rotom. The Infernape has to take some turns of sleep, too. But, yeah. Okay? Wait, they're giving me a shot? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. No, 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 we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Okay. So, Spore and Infernape. This is probably heavy slam into the Smeargle once again. Cool. Uh, the end game's so rough. Wait, did Tauros consume the Citrus Berry? It did, right? Okay, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what gives me the best odds of winning here. I don't know if I let Pump from Rotom at the range. Okay, I took... I, I think the play here is the Strength, the uh, Infernape, then Earthquake. I need Infernape to take two turns of sleep here. This is the guaranteed first turn. Steelix is still and then I have to live like a move from Rotom or I have to Rotom uh, goes down. Okay, Focus Sash. Heavy Slam. Does this do that much? Is Tauros heavy? Yikes. I go down the Discharge. I think. I think even if I somehow pull this off, I mean, I could hope they Hydro Pump it and they grow by missing. That could be thing. Although they don't know like what my Rotoros AB spread is, so maybe they do go for discharge. Well, I still need Infernape to stay asleep. And they woke up. Okay, yeah. Uh <laughs> I mean, I guess if I did make that protect I guess I had to protect Tauros then, because the extra HP couldn't matter, but I mean it, it came down to me getting two turns to sleep on the Infernape there anyway. Alright. Game two, gone. What went wrong? I guess like not I guess Infernape in the back and I didn't take the K on Rotom. Uh, I guess I should have taken the K on Rotom then. Okay, this upcoming game here, it's all the tough points right here. I think I'm gonna go with the same strat here of like Frostlass Crobat. I think it was like really, really good for the first game. I might just let Steelix do whatever it wants realistically still, because it just... I feel like I could have played around with the Steelix. The Steelix wasn't doing that much, I think, in the end. So I think it's completely fine to leave it. Yeah, the Inferno is tough. Infernape is tough. Let's see how this is going to go for the game three. Uh, this is so tricky. They're going to lead Steelix Gardevoir again. Okay. I'm going to lead Frostlass Crobat. Did we do the same thing? I guess we do do the same thing. I mean, I could taunt this time, but I don't think I ever risk Gardevoir attacking, right? That just seems like a terrible plan if that's the case. I guess I could Frost Breath here or I could... Nah, you know what? I can Icy Wind here and Cross Poison. I think that's always a play, because if they go hard Rotom, that's really bad. If they take the KO and protect Gardevoir, I think that's fine. I get Steelix, I get Smeargle in for free. And nice, they give me the Gardevoir. Oh, wait, this could be bad. No, wait. This could be fine? Hold on, I'm trying to weigh the odds here. It's actually... No, I had to Willow the Steelix then. I didn't expect him to give me the Gardevoir there. Hey, Earthquake, why? Why not heavy slam? Okay, no, I'm still in this now. Why? Okay. <laughs> Curse body. Uh, does that change much? Not really. Okay. Chances are coming in now. I always tailwind here and I icy wind. Rotom comes out. So I go for the icy wind here. I wish I had protect here, but I don't. So I just tailwind here. They have Discharge though, so Discharge I will have to play around. 
Yep, Discharge comes out. Wait, this might not knock out Crobat because it's spread. Yeah. Heron Frostless is fine. Oh, no. Okay, that's huge. That's huge. That's really big because I needed a Tailwind. Unfortunate, but okay. It's smashable. We take the KO here into... Okay. Ah, this is manageable now. This is manageable. The earthquake is... Okay, we go into Smeargle here. Time for some sleep turns. <laughs> Which is really bad uh, to rely on. But you know what? I do think it's a play here. So we go for the Spore into the Rotom slot. I could transform in a Rotom though. I wonder if I transform in a Rotom potentially to win this game instead of going for Storm. No, I think I need the Storm Throw. Yeah, I think I need the Storm Throw. Maybe not. I, I'm not too sure right here. The only problem is I'm pretty sure it's always a Heavy Slam and a Smeargle. So I'm losing my Sash. Oh, why did I have to get double parried? Oh, they swap out the Steelix and the Infernape? Wait, that works out for me. Okay. That works out for me. Rotom takes a turn. Okay, wait, hold on. That means they didn't break the Sash on Smeargle. That's huge. I'm going to Strength and Spore, I think. This is turn two of Tailwind, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's really big. That's really big. Does I break a Sash? Okay. Wait, they're locked in the Discharge too with the Rotom. This is risky for them. Okay. That's actually really good. Okay. <laughs> Smeargle doing Smeargle things. I got a Rock Slide here though, don't I? I'm pretty sure I do. Storm Throw, the Tauros. It's a, it looks like a Frail Rotom. They swap out Infernape, which is really smart, into the Steelix. They don't want to risk the discharge this time around. Okay, Storm Drill into Tauros. Okay, Tauros. Kind of need you, buddy. Get the Rock Slide and the Rotom. We do. Do you pick up a knockout? Just barely. Wake up. They get the discharge. Okay, that's really bad. And they get the para. Are you kidding me? Can I win? Maybe. How healthy is my frost slash? My frost is not healthy enough. Dang it. I need to rock slide here. And I need to spiky shield. I need Taurus to get a hit off. And I need to flinch the Steelix. Oh, that's so bad. And that doesn't even happen. Uh, well, I think the rock slide is more important. I need rock slide to land both and flinch the Steelix. Hey, okay, Citrus. Don't think this is saving me the game. Okay. Flinch the Steelix. Flinch the Steelix. I need a flinch. I need a big flinch. Do I live? Ever lucky. Dude, are you kidding me? Four paras? Are you serious with discharge? Uh, that wasn't even the first time. When I used Discharge, I got like maybe one or two Paras. Uh, what can I do though? I guess the play was the Strength there, but I don't think I could risk Infernate waking up. I don't know. Yeah, I can't win. Ah, uh, that's so frustrating. <laughs> that's so frustrating. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, well. That's the game of Pokemon sometimes. But seriously, like... All of that. All of that. And one of the most frustrating parts is if Smeargle didn't get full para there, I had a shot too. But I guess I had to fight through multiple para chances. But uh, that that's just that's just insanely lucky. And that is the show. Let me just say, when I thought I was going to use this team, I didn't expect the battles on how they turned out. But there were some crazy battles. If you did enjoy this video again, be sure to leave a like down below. Leave a comment down below. I hope you all enjoyed the battles because they were really insane. And if you want to check out the details of the team, there's a pastebin available in the description. 
Make sure you also check out the rest of my BDSP doubles content. I've used a lot of fun teams. The last team featured a really cool Blaziken plus for Alligator team. And it had a lot of fun, especially with the Articuno set that I was using on that team. So make sure you check those out if you haven't already. And yes, Series 12 content will be starting soon. But thank you all for tuning in. Have a great day, people. And until we bug again, I'll catch y'all later.